Hi, and welcome to the Insights from Dr. Intimacy YouTube webcast with your host, Prophetess Lenine Hanaya, a.k.a. Dr. Intimacy, where I will be giving you an enlightening look into the naked truth about sex, relationships, and intimacy from a spirit, soul, body perspective. I am so glad that you joined me today. Uh, what I would like to do today is actually continue with this series on incubus and succubus, sex demons. And this is actually the seventh segment in this series. It has been very powerful so far. There's been a great response to it. And I have really enjoyed sharing my heart, sharing my experiences, sharing the experiences of some of my followers. But more importantly than that, sharing the in-depth revelation that the Father has given me through my time and praying and studying about this topic. Um, and it has been actually about two weeks since I posted the last segment. And since there has been such a great lapse, what I'd like to do is just recap some of what has been discussed so far to catch everybody up. And then we'll just flow into the next part of the teaching. So I want to start by saying that I decided to do the teaching on Incubus and Succubus on YouTube because of the overwhelming response that I got to the article that I posted on my blog. And my blog has been up, uh, which can be found at drintimacy.wordpress.com. Um, I posted that article on my blog, and since the blog has been up just a little bit over a year now, there have been over 31,000 hits on the blog, and I would venture to say at least 80% of the activity on my blog is people that are coming to look for information on incubus and succubus, uh, which are sex demons. They also go by the name of spirit husband, spirit wife, marine spirit, and night demons. And um, even though they go by all of those names, one of the things that you learn in this series is that they are simply demons of sexual lust. They are very, very powerful spirits of sexual lust that um, are sometimes called by those names. But the names are not important. The assignment is what really matters. And so this being the seventh segment, I really strongly encourage you, if you haven't seen the other six segments, please go back. Each one is about 15 minutes. It will take you about 90 minutes to go through all six segments, but it is so important. If you are dealing with this issue, if you have a loved one that's dealing with it, if it's a spouse or a child, if you are in ministry, if you're a ministry leader, uh, I, I promise you that you have followers, whether they have said it to you or not, that are dealing with this issue, and they are going to want some information on how they can get delivered. They want some understanding about what they're going through. So please go back and watch all of the segments. Um, it is not a haphazard um, random talking in each segment. It's actually a curriculum that I'm following uh, and so each segment builds on the next. You learn something and then we build on it in the next segment. So it really would be advantageous and beneficial for you to watch all segments with pen and paper. You definitely want to have a notebook, go through and take some notes. And the curriculum that I'm studying from is actually out of my own book that I wrote. Really the Holy Spirit wrote it through me. But it's the Spirits of Sexual Perversion reference book. You can grab this on my website. DrIntimacy.com, DrIntimacy.com, and I've been studying out of chapter 18 of this book, and of course the Bible as well, uh, using some scriptures too, um, but it, there's a really in-depth 15-page uh, chapter on incubus and succubus in the book, and we've been, I've been strategically taking you through that chapter to open up this revelation. And, uh, and so that's a quick recap. What I want to do is read a letter from from one of the bloggers this is actually a comment that was left on the blog and I like to do that because for the people that are watching right now that are experiencing these attacks I want you to know that you're not alone you're not the only one going through this um, by far and for those that have never experienced this you've never experienced being attacked by a sex demon um, it may sound ludicrous to you when somebody else says it. Um, you may even think they're crazy. 
<laughs> but there are a lot of people experiencing this and I personally have experienced it. It is very, very real. And so in some of these segments, I, I have read some of the comments from the bloggers and I want to do that again in this segment to let you know there are a lot of people out there experiencing this. And I started the first session off reading one of those comments and let's do that again tonight. This is a comment that was left by somebody named Trevor on the blog. And he says, I've been dealing with this same issue since 2004, since I recommitted my life to Christ. I am in ministry, very discouraged, and rarely get a good night's sleep due to the oppression, torment, headaches, etc. Can't even begin to describe the horrific things that I have went through over the years. I have read numerous books, sought counseling from those in deliverance ministries, went through a deliverance session, combined with fasting and prayer. Very, very tired and drained most of the time. Very disappointed. Not sure what to do anymore. I wish there was a big red button that said, push here for immediate deliverance. I'd have taken advantage of that a long time ago. I applaud you for writing about this, Dr. Intimacy. Wish there were more of you in the church today, as I'm tired of having to defend the reality of my experiences to so-called believers. God save us from them and deliver me from these evil spirits and all the strongholds open doors within my mind and body. Amen. And again, that was from somebody who called himself Trevor. And that's so heartbreaking to me. There are actually hundreds of comments very similar to that on the blog. Um, and those are the ones that you can see. I, I don't post them all. Some of them are too graphic. I get them by email. I get them by text. I get them on Facebook. Um, and so this is really, really serious. And I really had a passion in my heart to help people with this issue. So if you go back, uh, segment one, I, I talk about whether or not these demons are real. Do they really exist? And we, we're talking out of scripture. I talk about how they manifest themselves. What is their purpose? Why do they come? And in the last couple of segments, I was actually talking about how they get in. How do these spirits show up? Where do they come from? So I want to do a quick recap on, um, and maybe it won't be so quick, <laughs> but I want to recap the 13 open doors that I discussed in segment six about how these spirits actually enter into your life. Um, first, fornication. Fornication is sexual immorality. It's not what we think. Sex outside of marriage, that is a very narrow-minded definition of fornication. Fornication is a generalized term in the Bible that covers all types of sexual immorality. So any type of sexual perversion, sexual sin, whether it be physical, hom homosexual activity, masturbation, if it's sexual fantasy, all of that opens the door for these spirits to afflict you. Uh, masturbation, we talked about that, was a huge open door. Masturbation, um, most people know, um, involves you stimulating yourself with your hands um, to sexually stimulate yourself or try to achieve orgasm. But understand that masturbation does not have to involve your hands. Anything that you are doing to deliberately sexually stimulate yourself with or without your hands with another person involved, even if it's all just in your mind and, um, and flexing those muscles down there, that is masturbation that opens the door. Pornography was a big, huge open door. Um, pornography opening the door for those spirits to come in, weakening your spiritual defenses, filling your conscious mind up um, with sexual images that then get lodged into your subconscious so that those subconscious thoughts of, of sexual immorality rule over you while you're asleep. And that's a big open door. And we talked about unforgiveness. Uh, if you're going to carry unforgiveness in your life, you might as well commit suicide. Because unforgiveness is you killing yourself. You're cutting yourself off from God, from all of his blessings, from your favor, from your purpose for even being here. So unforgiveness is going to open a door for any type of spirit because you actually take yourself out of the, the, the covering of Yahweh's grace when you hold unforgiveness and bitterness in your heart. 
And then we talked about carnality. A uh, carnality is any activity that does not deliberately build you up spiritually. So any activity that is absent of a pursuit of spiritual or kingdom things would be considered carnal. That doesn't necessarily mean that it's sinful. Uh, going to work, uh, unless you have a job that is specifically related to ministry, is carnal. It's not sinful. It's carnal. Uh, washing your dishes can be carnal. Mowing your lawn. Um, those things are not sinful, but they're not activities that are designed to build you spiritually. Remember this story in the in the Bible about Martha and Mary. Martha was carnal. She wasn't doing anything evil. She was cooking dinner to actually serve to her house guests, and that was lovely. But it was still a carnal activity that was drawing her away from intimacy um, uh, with the Father or the pursuit of deeper intimacy with Him. And and uh, Yeshua said to, to Martha, Mary has chosen that one needful thing which shall not be taken away from her. So understand that carnality can just be getting too busy with housework, with uh, the pursuit of your career, but it can also be sinful things as well. Um, but being involved in carnality and not building up your spirit, man, through reading the scriptures, through fasting and praying, through fellowshipping with the saints can definitely become an open door. Having fear in your life, having issues of fear and unbelief in your life, fear and doubt, these spirits feed on fear. They really, really thrive in a fearful environment. And so you're going to have to use the power of love to actually overcome fear for for, for the Father has not given us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power, of love, and a sound mind. And so you're going to have to use that, that power of love and self-control, controlling your emotions to overcome that fear, to close those doors. We talked about witchcraft. Witch, witchcraft is a big door. Um, excuse me. Witchcraft is a huge door. Um, rebellion, manipulation. Uh, horoscopes, lucky charms, all of those things, incantations, spells, Ouija boards, all of those types of things, but especially manipulation of other people. And specifically, we tend to manipulate our, those that are closest to us, our children, our spouses. And so manipulation, it was a big open door in witchcraft, sexual abuse, of course, a very obvious door, demons being transferred to you from the abuser. And also it invokes a spirit of fear and victimization when you are abused, but also verbal or emotional abuse as well. Any type of abuse at all will is a very inviting environment for these spirits because they are abusive. So they love an abusive environment. So that's going to open a door. Then we talked about uh, emotional wounds. When you are hurting emotionally, they take advantage of that weakness. Um, you know, that emotional weakness that woundedness prevents you from being in a posture where you are resistant to attacks. And so, you know, they are victimizers. They These are spiritual bullies, and they will take advantage of that. So you must get healing in all of your wounded places. And that's why forgiveness is so important. You can't be healed if you are bitter and unforgiving towards somebody else, which is preventing them from getting their healing. And then we talked about soul ties, and soul ties is really huge. Soul tie is when you are are willfully, uh, intellectually, and desirably connected to a person, place, or thing. When you're tied to them in order to anchor you or give you some sense of security uh, when you connect yourself to somebody. So you can actually be soul tied to a person, place, or thing. And whatever your soul tied to is going to allow for the easy transfer back and forth between you and the person, place, or thing that you are soul tied to. So if there are any fear issues or any activity of fear or perversion going on, witchcraft, and that soul tie, that can easily be transferred to you and open a door. So uh, my time is about up for this segment, and I didn't even get to venture into anything new. But um, the next segment, we're going to go into the dangers of the spirit and actually start talking about deliverance. And I'm going to talk about that one more open door that got cut off in session six, which is spiritual warfare. So thanks so much for joining, and I look forward to you being with me again next time. This is Dr. Intimacy. Thank you.